So there's a million things to do. Overwhelmed. People told me I have too many ovens in the fire. Is that what it is? Ovens in the fire? Irons in the fire? This is a stall video. I'm doing it on purpose so I can avoid having to post the end reveal of the pontoon boat because I don't have it done. That video is coming up after this one, but right now what I have for you is the hindsight video of my trailer mod. Remember I bought that bass boat converted into a tiny boat trailer for my personal boat? Now if I'd have had good foresight, I would have added these things, but I don't. So this is the hindsight video of extra things I had to add to make it work even better. Also, since this is a trailer video, check out these. Strapino straps, which are pretty much, if you guys ever seen boat buckles, these are the much better looking version with a little bit more activity. They come like this, they come with the full hardware, and they also come with an extra strap. So for those of you who don't have D-rings, or for those of you who don't want to put D-rings in the back of your transom, for those of you who have glass boats, or those of you who have kayaks, this kind of comes with extra stuff to make it work better. Love these. You should always have boat straps on your on your boat. It's just, it's way better than traditional straps or so. Last century, the traditional straps. Hook yourself up for some of these. Link in the description below for these on the Amazon store. Check them out. If this video hits 5,000 likes, I'll just give one of these away to one of you lucky people who comment down the bottom. I will respond to one of your comments and tell you to DM me. And by me, I mean not this tool who pretends to be me with a stupid text, some random spam number, and get scammed. I already, like, somebody, some of you guys have already been victims of this person. Do not fall for this crap. If it's me, you'll know it's me. Speaking of things to give away for 5,000 likes, we're gonna give away one of our custom switch panels, hot off the press in our store right now. Limited quantities available, but you can get one right now from me for free. They come with instructions, enough labels to label anything. You can use this for pretty much anything. Clear labels, regular labels, wiring diagrams, two-year warranty and all the components, full-time warranty for the actual panel itself from us, custom label by us, dual USB port slash voltmeters. It's freaking dope. One of these will look awesome. They're the best switch panels I've personally ever seen, and that's why they're official product of ours. If you get one, make sure it's not from this guy again. Don't fall for Scammy McScammerson. Well, update on the trailer. It works friggin' fantastic, except for one thing. It doesn't line up like perfect, so I do need some back guides. So I probably will be attaching them to the spot where I cut off, and they'll be flanging out, and we'll be putting rollers on them. So I'll be doing that next. All right, so this boat and its nonsense. Almost 50 ounces of resin had to go in here because I left it exposed and then it got rained on and then peeled and did its organic thing. So you can even see spots where it completely bled through no matter how much I put on. So this actually really needs another, like a sanding and another coat. But I'm probably gonna coat it with epoxy primer. I'm thinking that's gonna be a better deal. Might as well finish it off with that and keep it down and then just obviously redrill and secure it all. I did procrastinate a very long time to do this because for when it's really hot outside and welding and hot weather sucks even worse. I looked for trailer guides all over Amazon and really they were overpriced and I couldn't even find some to fit my boat because I had modded the trailer. Like once you go too far past stock mods on the mainstream trailers, nothing in the mainstream sold through any place is going to fit it. So you're going to have to make something. For sourcing the steel, I generally just go to the metal shop that's closest to me and look through their scrap pile. There's always a scrap pile because somebody always buys a full stick of this for at full price and then doesn't need as much and then they make cuts and there's always some leftover cuts in the pile. So you can just get a piece without having to buy the full stick. That's the cheapest way and they're generally a pretty good price. They might even discount you if you pay cash. I'm also making the brackets for the roller out of some leftover 316th angle that I had laying around from the last time we modded the trailer. So just spacing them out correctly so they will just couple the roller and then give you a lead extension for the bottom and top caps. So in drilling through thick steel like this, I always find it more beneficial to just step it up from a small one eighth inch bit all the way to a half inch bit and then eventually you get there otherwise trying to chew through all that with a half inch bit is miserable and you'll blow out your bit even if you put lubricant these brackets are out a little far considering the top cap but the bottom one we have is a fatter one so you can get two types of roller brackets or two types of different sizes we got the skinnier one but the roller caps on the very bottom are for the fat rollers now i I did that for a specific reason, and we'll talk about it here in a second. But where you get these rollers, we just sourced them on Amazon. We source the axles, and then the top things that keep them on pressure, those are called nut caps. And they're pretty much for any type of boat roller. Nut caps are really prevalent for that. Once we were done welding them to the trailer, we just hit them up with spray paint and primer, like last time. And here it is. I got this done. 
I think those actually came out pretty darn well. I do think, just based off the layout, that they'll catch. There's enough space right here so it catches the thickening of the roller. You can see the roller tapers and thickens and it'll hit there. Level out. The bottom one was a mistake. I bought it, but I actually think it'll help level out the bottom. And I did make these a little wide. I, I mean, that was part of just not wanting to trim it because it was hot at night and I was lazy. But I think that actually helped because I would not have been able to stick those on. See how wide those are if I didn't actually put those on. So it all kind of works weird. Like, it just works weird. The only thing I'm missing is like some tube end caps. Does anybody know where to find those? You know, just shove them right in there. Like the two by two tubing, just bam. The way I don't, nobody like misses skin on a knee, accidentally hitting that, getting on the boat or something. And then obviously the hubs, they have problems. The hubs have serious problems. I gotta take one of those apart. But what it's really missing is a little bench step right here. So I saw this cool little step that uh, I saw on like, on like a Skeeter or a Ranger. And I was like, dang, that's pretty dope. That's exactly what I need just right here. Cause I, I'm walking on this little thing. I find myself getting off here when this is not here and walking on this and then almost slipping and dying. And I was like, well, I'm gonna put gator skin on this. But I was like, no, I can do better. I can put my own little little step here. The step will be immensely useful in uh, docking and loading this boat up. Okay, all right, here's the truck. I have this bigger piece for something else and we'll be talking about that a little later. But these little pieces here. I just remember something. My grinder, it took a crap on me. Like it, it died. This thing just died. Like during the wire wheel, like during like the whole budget build painting, just died on me. It was very upset, very upset. Milwaukee, ever since you went to China, not a fan of your tools anymore. Actually, who am I kidding? That's a lie. Look, look at all these tools. I can't get rid of Milwaukee, I'm too invested in their stuff. I have too many batteries, too many things. But I'm really pissed that the grinder just destroyed. It just like stopped working. So guys, I was thinking like, like an angle thing came out like here, then like right here, like pretty generous. So maybe we'll just cut these into an angle. Like we'll just miter those. I need a chop saw. I need to go get some tools. We're gonna just go buy some tools. Oh look, magically it appeared. All right, so we got the Vulcan hooked up. But this is loosely what we would want. So once we tack it in place, then we'll stick it on there with magnets or whatever, and then we'll tack it in place to the trailer. Then we'll just weld the whole thing together and then we'll choose our top plate, whatever that may be. Whole shroud thing. It's like a 360 shroud. So it's safer. I just realized the stupid shroud comes off. Babe, all right. There's that. Not the most great well. There was a serious gap down there. That was not gonna be pretty, but the other one down there is not gonna be, well, it's a little bit closer. The other one's actually the better fit. This one was like the more heinous fit. We still got really good <laughs> top and side welds on it. And even in, in the inside, that was super easy to tell weld an angle like that. So the inside welds are really good. They puddled up perfectly. So last little weld down there. And then all these welds here are super sketch. Because of how bad the gap expanded for me to fit them flush here and how much I had to fill that in with the weld. So we have it all kind of grinded. My son came out, I had him practice on it. So he practiced every so often. He actually got pretty good for only welding for like, you know, 20 minutes. I mean, the consistency, maybe not, um, but you know, some of it I helped him with, but more than that, we tied that part up. That's a part, I mean, we needed a part to level the whole section here and I didn't really have any angle or anything. So I just put that other piece of tube I had. We're probably gonna paint this whole stupid trailer black. I painted it smoke gray because I was trying to get rid of this one spray paint. I just needed, I was tired of looking at it. I got, I got a whole locker full of spray paint and it all sucks. So, uh, you know, I've been trying to use it forever. So I just had an excuse that I painted the whole trailer like this metallic, this gunmetal. I really don't like it. I should have painted it black. All right, so here it is in the daylight. You can see it a little bit better. So it came out all right. I got it. I don't really have a whole lot of complaints. Stand right on it. You'll be okay. I'm kind of over this. I just want to go fishing. There's these few select things that I have to take care of to where the boat's gonna be nice. Got this piece of plywood, like so. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and, well, I think it's actually reversed. I'm gonna flip it here. Yeah, like that. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna preserve this, sand it, finish it, preserve it. Then we'll go ahead and gator skin the whole top. And then we'll probably gator skin this rail here. And I really would like to do something here. Just like something basic, but I don't really, I'm kind of burnt out. I just want to go fishing. All right, I painted it. I tried to record painting it, but the phone kept overheating because it's a million degrees out here. Somebody got this. It's still a little wet in the edges. I, I gunked the edges to seal in the grain because obviously that's where water's going to soak in the quickest. I'm not terribly worried. It's, it's, a, it's a scrap piece of wood. I got like a whole... 15 minutes of labor in it. If it goes to crap, it goes to crap. But right now, it's the weekend, metal shop's closed, and it is what it is. But I'm, this is a stickable surface. This is a nice, smooth, but stickable surface. So when I apply laminate on top, it will work. It will work. We are gonna go ahead and we're just gonna use uh, some lath screws. I don't have any canvassing card where I have this. It's just pan head, lath screws, metal screws. So we're gonna have to countersink a little bit or just kind of indent in there just where I want these. And then we'll put them in so it's at least flush and you don't see the bulge. Assuming that it's still good. This stuff is, I don't know if it's good. No, that's not great. It's all rubbery in there. Oh man, come on. Is there any good in there? Uh, uh. Yeah, you know, I think we're gonna have to throw this away. Fail. All right, well, I was gonna use this black EVA foam sheet I've had for like forever. And I was like, finally, chance to use it. Nope. Contact cement thing was dried out. That's whatever. Yeah. I'll trim a little bit with a with a finer um, X-Acto knife to get these last little ends. The hobby knife was a little little dull, so we'll clean that up. But other than that, I gotta say, function-wise, quite happy about it. It's actually perfectly where I need it to be on the boat. It's like exactly where you, it's exactly where you need to be. Like, because right here is where I step off. The only part I can't step off, step off here. What would make this optimal is if I weld something here. So that's for another day, though. I'm just gonna go and enjoy the boat, the new mods, enjoy the step, and enjoy these things, and let you know how they go. Be sure to check out Strapino straps. They're freaking dope. I love these things. I have them here. I have them on my Yak Killer trailer, and I'm gonna be using them. Ooh, and I'm probably just gonna be using them on all my trailers. Man, it's hot out here. Ooh, pretty much gonna be using them on all my trailers from here on out in all the projects. And I have several trailers to mod. So stay tuned, check them out. Check out for the link for those in the description area if you wanna see them. All right guys, see you out there.